10 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. If you are looking for a good book, I know everybody's going to tell you their book is good. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a good one. A.J. Finn is the author of The Woman in the Window. It's a thriller novel. A.J.'s credentials include journalist. He's a contributor to the L.A. Times, the Washington Post, the Times Literary Supplement, UK, and he's obviously a very talented novelist. The book is The Woman in the Window. Let's find out about it. It's getting really good reviews on Amazon. Good morning, A.J. Thank you for calling in this morning. Oh, thanks so much, Larry. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, this is one of those books. You're getting a lot of great uh, feedback from the book, uh, including from Stephen King. I, I, I noticed that the inside flap has a quote. Can I read it to the listeners? Yeah. It says, this was Stephen, I, Stephen King. Do. He said, one of those rare books that really is unput downable, delightful and chilling. Delightful. Delightful and chilling. I love that. <laughs> that's like that's like lemon juice and milk together, right? But <laughs> uh, I mean, that's awesome that you got that kind of an accolade from from Stephen King. I, I got to tell you, it was a couple of months ago. I I logged into my email account and I saw I had a message with the subject heading from Steve King. And I thought, I think I got a congressman named Steve King. I bet he's you know soliciting <laughs> funds. No, it, it was the other Stephen King wow. who, who wrote to say that he'd read the book and asked if I'd like a quote. And I said, yes, yes, please. Thank wow. you, sir. So wow. that, that, was, that was a highlight of my life, yeah. I often wonder <laughs> how prolific authors have time to read other people's work. I often wonder yeah. how that happens. I, I have no idea. Another, another author who's been so generous and gracious towards me is Gillian Flynn, the, the, the novelist behind Gone Girl yeah. and, and other excellent psychological thrillers. She is a very, very busy woman. She's writing and producing scripts and films, and yet she made time to read my book and to comment on it. She, she just did an event with me last night in Chicago where I'm on tour. I, I've been bowled over by the generosity of these established authors. It's really heartening. And, and I mean, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a big, amazing miracle for you. I mean, now it's being uh, offered as a, what do you call it, a film? What, what do you say, r option for a option, film? Option, yes. What, right? You have so, a so generally... Usually books are optioned. In this case, the studio was so aggressive that they actually bought the rights outright, which rarely happens. And in the wake of that purchase, we sold the novel in 38 territories. We think that's a record for a debut. And last week, I'm, I'm really in a state of disbelief still, last week we learned that the book will debut at number one on the New York Times bestseller list. That's and it's the first time since... Well, yeah, it's the, I'm, I'm, I'm pinching myself. It's the first time since 2006 that a debut novel has managed this. So I feel hugely grateful, not only to my publishers, but yeah. especially to, to the readers. Well, they're, th they're grateful to you, too. Trust me. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. Are you one of those overnight successes that really took 30 years or something like that? <laughs> you hear about them all the time, I, right? I think that's a... Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's a fair description. I, I grew up gorging myself on detective fiction as a kid. I devoured Agatha Christie and Sherlock Holmes and the Hardy Boys. And then as a teenager, I dove headfirst into Patricia Highsmith, author of The Talented Mr. Ripley, and a, an early pioneer of the genre that we now term psychological suspense. And then as a doctoral student at Oxford, I focused on detective fiction, after which I launched a career in publishing, focusing principally on mysteries and thrillers. So I've been steeped in this genre for my whole life. It's been a, a life of crime. And this, this book represents the culmination of all that experience. And uh, your book also is a reflection of your uh, personal life, too, about your misdiagnosed bipolar yes. disorder. Yes, so I, I, should, I should set the scene by describing the book. The, the woman in the window is a sort of rear window for the 21st century. Our heroine is a, an agoraphobe, once a respected child psychologist who's now shut into her Harlem townhouse, and she whiles away her days chatting online to other agoraphobes, playing chess, learning French, self-medicating with booze and pills, and, crucially, spying on her neighbors. And one night, she thinks she witnesses an act of violence in the house across the park, but she can't set foot outside to investigate because she's an agoraphobe, nor can she persuade anyone, including the police, to believe her. And as the narrative unfolds, she starts to question whether, in fact, she saw anything at all. And in, uh, in plotting this story, I, I certainly drew on Rear Window. I, I'm a great classic film buff, and I, I love Hitchcock's work in particular. But I recognized, and, and this is the benefit of having worked in the publishing industry for 10 years, that uh, many thrillers are, are like crossword puzzles. You, you, you embark on them, you're briefly diverted, you finish them, you throw them away. And uh, 
the novels of some of my favorite contemporary writers like Gillian Flynn and Kate Atkinson and Tana French are more substantive than that. They've got more subtext, more, more to say. That's the sort of book I wanted to write, something with more on its mind and in its heart than your average psychological thriller. And so uh, I, I drew on my experience with depression. I struggled with the disease for 15 years since I was a senior at Duke before uh, my diagnosis was corrected in 2015. I turned out I had to form a bipolar disorder. And within six weeks wow. on my new meds, I felt quite restored and, and, and able, wow. indeed eager to Wow. to write about this experience. I should, I should add, the book is not about depression. It's a thriller, but uh, is, I, yes. I hope we feel emotionally invested in this character. Yeah, if I can just brag uh, one more time, I, we have a lot of authors we speak to. Robert and I do this every single day, usually several authors yep. in, the, in the course of a day. I've never had somebody, except for Dean Kuntz, I think he's the only mm -hmm. one that's on the list of the top authors. I've had many authors on, with their book on the top, but not the... You are listed as number 16 of the top authors on Amazon. That's higher than Shakespeare. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that you is are amazing. I am what a ma hack. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's just as amazing. That's higher than Dan Brown. I don't know. You know if, I don't know. Mm -hmm. He's just a, Who? Just, yes. No. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that, I mean, did you know that? Did you know you were up there? I did not. I, I avoid um, reading reviews and checking rankings simply because... You know, Larry, I figured there's nothing I can do about it. If someone liked the book, That's great. True. If they didn't, sorry. That's true. Yeah, yeah, but and, this is and a, the rankings are beyond my control, but I'm pleased to hear it. But this is about the authors. Now, I don't know how they do this with the authors, but you are number 16 on this list. Um, great, I'll take it. Uh, your book also uh, uh, talks about and focuses on family, because even though she's a recluse, she does have a daughter. Yes, she's the, from whom she is estranged. But uh, this, this relationship with her family, to my mind, forms the emotional core of the story. And again, I wanted to lend this character depth and dimension. So many characters in, in novels, particularly in quote-unquote suspense novels, seem to exist solely within the confines of the plot and serve only to advance the narrative. You get the feeling that if these particular circumstances hadn't befallen them, they wouldn't exist at all. And I wanted to endow my character with, with, with hobbies and, and habits and, indeed, a family so that she would be that much more relatable. I wanted readers to root for her, to care about her, and to feel invested in her fate. And there are uh, comic relief parts also. It's not all gloom and doom. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you comment on that. One of the reasons I love Hitchcock so much is that, with the exception of his two best-known films, Psycho and Vertigo, which are pretty much entirely humorless, his movies are enlivened by a wit, sometimes a, an outright sunniness. Mm -hmm. And it would be quite a slog to read a novel about a person grappling with her mental health if it, if it weren't leavened somewhat by humor. I, I like to think that Anna, the protagonist, is, is witty and ironic and, and funny at times and, and intelligent. So I'm, I'm pleased you, you picked up on that and connected with it. Um, well, congratulations on your success. The book, again, is called The Woman in the Window. It's written by our guest, A.J. Finn, and he was kind enough to send us a copy of the book. It's a hardcover copy of the book, and I would like to give it away. So if you call me right now, I'll make sure I pick one of you at random. The number is 622 too. The rest of us have to go buy it. I did find it on Amazon. I've already established that it's getting rave reviews. It's, it's unbelievably successful. A as an author, A.J. Finn, number 16 on the list of top 100 authors, <laughs> which you never hear about like that. ever. Exactly. You never hear that. <laughs> Nora Roberts, by the way, is also on this, and, and she's been on the show, too. Congratulations. Uh, well, thank you for being thank on the you. air with us. Um, let's see. Do you have a website of your own? I, I just set up a website, ajfinn2ends.com, but it is... It is bare bones i uh i've got social media platforms facebook instagram and twitter all aj finn books okay aj finn books that, that makes it simple well what's next i mean how are you going to top this this is gonna be hard <laughs> i i've got <laughs> i've got another book due it's a it's an unrelated psychological thriller set in san francisco i'll keep tabs on the the movie adaptation and and then we'll see i'm i'm excited and 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 eager to see what yeah. comes next. Now, when when all the chips fall, is is San Francisco going to be in California or New California? <laughs> 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 that is an excellent question. Just not we, sure. we shall see. <laughs> uh, thank, <laughs> thank you, AJ. Thank you for being on the show with us today. Thanks so much for having me. We'll be right back.
Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. With opposition on both sides, there's no indication.